welcome to the August edition of Diabetes Insight. We're so happy that you can join us today. We have a really exciting show. I have wanted to learn more about Tai Chi for years. Um, the um, nice lady that's going to be with us today, Victoria Wessler, I first met her actually through email um, and her programs that she does with Tai Chi and ever since then, I have been really intrigued by the idea of what it is and how it helps our bodies. It's just amazing. So she's going to be with us in the second and third segments of the show so that we can learn about Tai Chi and the great effect that it can have on our diabetes. But first, we're going to go over with you some ADA news. And I have with me Katherine Washam. Hi. She is an intern in our office. You met her last month. She was on here. She introduced herself along with some other interns. But Catherine has been putting together a lot of programs for our families, and so she's going to be talking to us about that. But first, let's talk about um, our Indianapolis Step Out Walk to Stop Diabetes. It's coming up on August 27th, yeah. so it's coming up very soon. I'm very excited. Yes. And we, there's still time for you to come out and join us. Our contact information is on the bottom of the page. Um, Indy, you can go to IN Step Out or on Facebook, it's IN Step Out Indiana. Um, or you can email our office, indiana at diabetes.org. That's pretty simple. Um, so if you want to join our walk, feel free to do that. And some, what are some of the events that we're going to be having at Walk Cat? Um, I know for Camp John World, we're going to have our alumni tent, and I'm hoping to get together a photo booth for it. Fun. Um, all that. I, uh, Lindsay's in the works of getting some cheerleaders from local high schools to perform. And Lindsay is our step out walk manager, yes, Lindsay she is. Houston. So, what else do we have planned? I think she might be talking to Austin to see if she can get some of his salsa co workers to oh, maybe okay. teach some of us some salsa moves. And some salsa dancing, that sounds like fun. We'll have food on hand, uh, mm -hmm. we'll have other music and entertainment, lots of activities for children to do. Yeah. And we have a beautiful walk route. Um, we're down there at White River State Park outside the NCAA building. So, come on out and join us on Saturday, August the 27th for our step out walk. And then coming up in November on the 5th, we have our annual Josiah Kirby Lilly Distinguished Service Award Gala. And <laughs> <laughs> this gala will honor someone that has made great advancements in diabetes through the years. And so I can't wait to see the winner unveiled at mm -hmm. the gala. And we'll have a silent auction as well as a live auction. And again, it's a great, fun event. And if you're interested, again, contact our office and we can give you more information. Yeah, I've been watching Judy and her old intern, Emily. They've got some really cool donations from local businesses oh, what around kind of the area. Have you seen? Um, well, I know that I think she might have gotten tickets to the Shed Aquarium in Chicago. Fun. Um, we have tickets to the Louisville Slugger Museum and Factory. So if you're a big baseball fan, that's probably something you definitely want to bit on and there's Absolutely. so much more than that. Yes, we have um, tables and tables lined up of silent auction items that are all really cool things and then some pretty spectacular live auction items. So it's not an evening to be missed. So contact our office for more information. And then on November the 18th, we're doing our first annual health care conference. And this is specifically for the medical professionals. So for doctors, nurses, uh, diabetes educators, pharmacists, dietitians, and we will have experts from around the country coming in to teach them the latest um, on the medical standards for diabetes mm -hmm. care. So we're excited for that as well. So Kat, um, as I mentioned earlier, you have been designing several programs just for families. So I want you to tell our audience about some of the things we have going on for families. Okay. And this would be for children with type 1 or type 2 diabetes. Type 1. Well, in the past, last, two weeks ago, thanks to Roche Diagnostics, they gave us a tour and showed us just exactly how the test strips from AccuCheck are made. So that was really interesting. And they were nice enough to throw, on the, to throw this huge diabetic, vegetarian-friendly lunch for us. And we got to meet a lot of their employees. And even the head of the di um, the diabetes diagnostics department too. So. What intrigued you most about how the test strips are made? So they have this thing called the yellow room where they create the 
like solution to go on the test strip so be able to tell your blood sugar and it's called the yellow room because all the lights are like yellow color which is like oh. part of the reason why if you look closely at their test strips the little part where you poke your finger and put the blood is it's got that tinge of yellow because it's made in there i didn't so know i thought that. it was really really I've cool seen that tinge of yellow but i didn't know where it came from mm -hmm. that's really interesting so yeah that was a really fun event i'm hoping we can probably do that every year with them they that were amazing great. to work with uh, this past Saturday, we had our first ever uh, club, Just My Type meeting. And this is really for children with type 1 diabetes is, yes. and their families. Mm -hmm. My goal of it is to help them build up on their diabetic skills. Like, for example, this past weekend, we our first meetings event was carb counting. So uh, I think no matter what your age is, you can always use a refresher on carb counting. So mm -hmm. I created a few different games, and it was really fun. A uh, big one was the carb is right, so like the price is right, <laughs> but the carb is right. And I took pictures of popular meals from different restaurants around the area and gave them a description of it, and they had a minute to figure out how many carbs was in oh, the picture. Oh, very cool. And the, the main point of that was, like, thanks to technology nowadays, we can just look it up on our phone. I found all the information on my phone because back when I was like smaller we right. it, was, it was a giant guessy game like I like to say that our lives is like a giant math equation right absolutely yeah okay, what other things do you have coming up uh well coming up in October we have our um first ADA at play family event we're going to be in Lafayette Indiana at Columbian Park Zoo and the first 30 people to sign up will get a tour of the zoo so that'll be really fun we're going to have picnic food for the families around the area to come and it's just going to be a great meet and greet and you had mentioned something about behind the scenes at mm -hmm. the zoo so what's that about so it's a they're going to give us an hour-long tour for the first 30 minutes they have this program where they're going to show animals that have been the inspiration for today's medical technology so for example that she said they would try to bring in a porcupine because like the i think it's quills it's called uh -huh. the quills on the porcupine is what inspired like shots today and things like that too so i thought that was okay that's really interesting, interesting. yeah very and good. it's nice because even if you don't do the tour, the park, the zoo there is still free, and they have monkeys, wallabies, petting zoo. I'm uh -huh. a person, I'm a big fan of the petting zoo myself. So these are great family events. So mm -hmm. for parents or grandparents and and their kids, bring the whole family. Bring the whole family. Um, but sometimes parents like a little time away, right? Exactly. So which, what have you got planned for that? Well, on October 22nd, so the week after the 88 play event. Thanks to Traders Point Winery, they're putting on a wine tasting event for um, our camp for our family parents. Sorry, it's parents okay. of type one diabetic <laughs> children. Um, we're gonna have 50 spots to sign up for. I'm gonna get the flyer out starting at walk, and I'm just really excited. There's gonna be a bunch of wine tasting for them. The the area it's in is really nice, and of course we'll provide like crackers and cheese, anything uh -huh. that's customary with wine. But my main point for this is I'm releasing a diabetic babysitters list where they're either college students who have type 1 diabetes and want to camp themselves, or they're past med staff from Camp John Warhol, so they are experienced with the technicalities of diabetes, which I thought would be great for parents to have. My mom had a diabetic babysitter for me when I was like four or five, and mm -hmm. I just know it made her feel so much better. Absolutely. So tell our families real quickly, we've just got a few seconds left, but to or tell our audience actually <laughs> why is it so important that these families of children with diabetes have this time together it's just the support like for me i didn't i was only diabetic in my school and it was just really hard and like when i finally went to camp having that support system was all i needed to like really em not embrace having diabetes but to feel better about having it so it's really important for your children to make those connections and it's also important for parents to know that they have a support network mm -hmm. out there Yes. Okay, well, thank you, Kat. No problem. Um, we were pleased to have you here as our guest today and for filling our audience in on all the upcoming programs that we have. So we're going to take a quick break, and then we'll, we will be back with Victoria Wessler, and we'll be talking about Tai Chi. Stay tuned. <music> You know, uh, when Margaret and I decided to sell the old estate here, we had uh, only one choice in signage. Logan Street signs and banners. Conveniently not located on Logan Street anymore, but rather located on 10th Street on the south side of Noblesville. Well, we sold the old beauty, and we were able to buy this wonderful estate. 
and we had so much money left over, I was able to buy this beautiful 1968 Eldorado Cadillac for Margaret, only 472,000 miles. Margaret loves it because it's got those big seats and that heavy duty suspension to support her Schvelt frame. Next time you're looking for signs or banners, call old Jim at Logan Street Signs and Banners, 773-7200. Conveniently not located on Logan Street anymore. And I have with me Victoria Wessler. As I mentioned in our first segment, I have been intrigued by Tai Chi for some time. I first met Victoria actually through email or through a program. I don't know. It's been a number of years. And I'm finally getting to actually meet her in person and to learn more about Tai Chi and how it can help people with diabetes. So, Victoria, start off and tell us a little bit about yourself and what got you interested in Tai Chi. Well, um, I'll answer what got me interested in Tai Chi first, and then I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I was looking about seven or eight years ago for an additional exercise program. I take Pilates, and I do a lot of walking, but I was looking for something that, that was just a little different, a little bit more mindful movement. And there happened to be a free class, a free Tai Chi class um, offered in our community, and um, it was a one-time class, and I thought, I'll take it. Um, so I went, and I thought it was the worst thing I had ever uh, gone to. Really? It was so slow and it was so deliberate. Um, and, and I just, I was a type A personality. I was so crazy and stressed out. I had just taken early retirement. Um, slowing down was the last thing I knew how to do. And so I didn't think I wanted to go back to the second class, but I did. And then I started doing research on Tai Chi. And I started doing research on the medical applications of it. And when I found out all of the things that Tai Chi could do for your mind and your body, um, yet be so relaxing and easy to do, I got hooked. Um, and I decided that I wanted to share that with people. Okay. There weren't a lot of classes being offered in the community. Um, and so I became a certified instructor. And um, I currently teach classes at Witham Hospital in Lebanon and Community Hospital North in Indianapolis. Okay. So tell us what Tai Chi is. Okay. Um, well, first I'll tell you what Tai Chi isn't. Okay. Um, the biggest question I get is, is Tai Chi a religion um, or do we practice religion in the class? And the answer to that is no. Um, tai Chi comes from the Chinese martial arts and has its um, basis in traditional Chinese medicine. So Tai Chi is the most practiced form of exercise in the world. Oh. Um, more people practice that than anything else. Um, it's just starting to get a foothold in the United States. Okay. Though. And it is an exercise that is characterized by slow, continuous movement, um, focused breathing, and mindful intent. So you're working your mind and your body when you do Tai Chi. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. It is. The yeah. most used exercise. Yeah, the most, yeah it is. Wow. Most practiced in the world. Um, so what makes Tai Chi different from other forms of exercise? Okay. Um, tai Chi is different from other forms of exercise in a number of different areas. Um, first and foremost is, um, I keep coming back to how gentle it is. Um, when you finish a Tai Chi class, you feel simultaneously energized and relaxed. Um, it's very hard to describe, yeah. <laughs> but, but you do. You feel great afterwards. You're not exhausted. Um, you should not hurt after a Tai Chi class. Um, the next day, you should not have any, um, you know, any shoulders or legs mm -hmm. that are bothering you. Um, and so I think it's very unique that an exercise that is so gentle can have such a powerful effect on your body. Um, also, Tai Chi can be done seated or standing. Um, I have people that come to class that sometimes can't finish a whole class. And so we have chairs. Okay. You can finish the class sitting down. Um, we never get on the floor. 
Um, so it's great for people that, that don't want to get on a floor. For example, in a yoga class, right. you might get on a floor. This is great for people who have limited mobility. It's fantastic. And it's great for people who have limited mobility because if you stick with it, you're going to increase your mobility. So someone that um, has to sit in a wheelchair yes. and really can't get out, mm -hmm. there are still moves that yes. that person can do. I have a participant right now um, who's been with me for oh my gosh, probably five years now, um, who initially came and could stand and has had a condition that now has her in a wheelchair and she and her husband come to every class and he does it standing and she does it in her wheelchair. That's fantastic. It's beautiful. So when people are coming to the classes, mm -hmm. is it something that once a week is good enough or should you come twice mm -hmm. a week or once a month or what's okay. the frequency? Okay. If you look at the clinical studies that are done on the effectiveness of Tai Chi, most of them have a protocol where they'll um, have a participant taking a Tai Chi class twice a week for 30 minutes or 45 minutes. So my recommendation is that you either take a class twice a week and starting in October, we will have um, two morning classes at community, which will be great, one on Monday morning, one on Wednesday. Um, if you can't do that, then the group that I'm certified through um, also has DVDs, so you can follow the class okay. at home on the days that you can't come to class. Okay, yeah. very good. Oh, uh, what kinds of equipment do you use? Oh, what, and clothing. That's the best thing about Tai Chi. Okay. We are dressed to do Tai Chi. Really? Um, you just wear pants and flat, stable shoes, maybe a, a blouse or a, a sport top like you have on. Okay. You don't wear no yoga pants, no you know exercise outfits, um, and there is no equipment. Um, I do use a chair in my class. Like I said, we start out in a chair for beginners, um, for the balance work. We hold on to the back of the chair. Um, but that's it. Tai Chi is the most accessible exercise that there is. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. You just mentioned balance. Yes. So is that another core um, benefit of Tai Chi is, is better balance? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, the Center for Disease Control um, recommends Tai Chi as the number one exercise to do for um, gaining better balance and maintaining your balance. And that's one of the things, um, when I survey my participants, they'll say that over time, that's the one thing they seem to notice the most is that their balance does improve. We work on balance every single day in class. That's, um, that's good to know because yeah. I, I've just noticed as I've gotten a little mm -hmm. older that sometimes I feel a little unbalanced. Or is well, it imbalanced? <laughs> I don't know. I think it's unbalanced. <laughs> but um, but it's interesting that you say that because um, falls are such a huge issue. Right. And most people think it's just the elderly that fall. But falls are the number one reason that people 40 and over come to the emergency room. And it's because of... As young as balance, 40. As young oh. as 40. And so that's that was really a surprise to me. Mm -hmm. um, and so what's the best thing you can do to not fall? It's to have good balance. Right. But that just declines naturally unless you work at it. And so Tai Chi provides that activity also, which is great. It's a, it's, yes. it's perfect exercise. It really is. Yeah, I really am really is. excited yeah. to, for your demonstration in the yeah. next segment. That's going to be interesting. Have to go to the next segment. We can just go right into uh, demonstrations if you want. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah. So, all right, well, um, so when you watch someone doing mm -hmm. Tai Chi, right. they're moving so slowly and gracefully. So how can those slow, gentle mm -hmm. movements provide exercise value? That is um, a question that I get a lot. People um, will come and they'll watch it, and, and it's just so hard to understand. Um, tai Chi is working on your body at two levels. Um, from a Western medicine perspective, it's working on your bone density because we're doing weight shifting where we're pressing into the ground all the time. Oh. Um, it's working your muscles. It's um, loosening up a lot of muscles. It's great for your upper back. It's great for your um, mobility. So from a Western medicine perspective, it's working on you physically at all different levels. But because it has its basis in traditional Chinese medicine, it's also working on, um, on you internally for the movement of the qi. And the qi is the energy that the Chinese believe runs through our bodies and nourishes all of our organs. Um, for example, the, um, the meridians, which um, sort of are like little rivers that the qi flows through, this would be the heart meridian. It runs from your little finger up through here. here. And when we do Tai Chi, um, we'll have movements where we'll stimulate the heart meridian. And we're going to do one of those in the demo today. Okay. So Tai Chi is healing you from the outside in and the inside out. 
and it's been around for over 2,000 years, and I, I can testify, it's, it's extraordinarily powerful. Um, is it just for older people? No, but I do get phone calls where people ask me if they're not old enough to take the class, because <laughs> <laughs> there's a stereotype. Right. If, you, if you see pictures of people in China doing Tai Chi, there are all these elderly people doing Tai Chi, um, and I tell them that they're elderly because they do Tai because Chi, they, and they're so okay. healthy, and they can live so long, um, but no. People should start Tai Chi at, as soon as they can at an early age. Um, so it's it's really so this accessible would be good for, for children to do in school. Absolutely, especially in the day and age of less recess yes. and things like this. If teachers yes. could work in just mm -hmm. a few Tai Chi movements, sure. a little bit of then, the breathing would uh -huh. calm them down. Um, I have a participant in one of my classes who is a um, a psychologist, and she uses the breathing techniques with her daughter. Um, just to calm her down before bed every night. Oh, very you know, interesting. So my daughter is a, a pre-K teacher, mm -hmm. and so she would take her students and they would do some yoga, but yeah. I need to same tell her thing. about the Tai Chi. But it's the same concept, that, that mindful movement. There's, there's so much adrenaline going on in our bodies uh -huh. all the time that the Chinese believe that we have to have that balance. So um, for all the activity that we do, there also needs to be a rest period, and that balances us out. Okay. Um, what makes Tai Chi a good choice, especially for people with diabetes? Because it's my understanding that there are different types of Tai Chi certifications. Yes. And that diabetes is one of those mm -hmm. certifications. Mm -hmm. So explain to us okay. more about that. Um, when, when, I, when I had my career, I spent 10 years in diabetes care. Um, I worked for a company that made AccuChecks for Roche. Oh, so okay. I had an opportunity to visit a lot of diabetes care clinics and talk to diabetics about their lifestyle needs. And exercise is always a big point of right. discussion. Um, what makes Tai Chi so good for a diabetic is that it's easily accessible. It can be done anywhere, anytime, any place. Um, it's very gentle on the joints. Many times, um, if you're older, you've got joint problems that may prevent you from doing um, high-impact aerobics. Tai Chi is actually classified as a low-impact aerobic activity. Um, it will burn as many calories per hour as brisk walking. Really? So, so it, it is effective for weight so loss. So very effective then. for weight loss um, from two standpoints, the um, calories that you burn, but also um, from calming yourself down, your body produces less cortisol, and it's believed that cortisol makes your body hang on to fat. Okay. So you've got it coming at you both ways, uh -huh. the mind and the body. Um, but also for a diabetic, the um, ability to do an exercise that can take you through the rest of your life. Um, you may not be able to do TRX for the rest of your right. life, but I guarantee you, you can do, you can tai, do tai Chi tai for the rest of your life. I am just so intrigued I, you have by to come this. To class. I know, I, I feel like I'm sitting here with my mouth open. <laughs> It's just, I'm just well, so interested. I, I love same, this. I felt the same way too. Um, on my website, I've got I do research, um, write about research articles and how Tai Chi affects everything from um, heart disease. It actually makes your blood vessels more elastic, um, to blood pressure, to stress management. And I'm amazed too. I really am. Okay. It's wonderful. Well, what do you look for in an, in an instructor? Okay. Um, the first thing that you should look for in an instructor is whether or not they are certified. Um, there are many good instructors um, that are not certified, but if you're looking for a Tai Chi for Health program specifically, um, I would look for someone who is certified. Um, I would look for someone that would allow me to come and observe a class if I wanted to, okay. just to see what it might be like. Right. Um, I would look at the room that they teach in. Is, is the lighting good? Um, is there accessibility to water, to a restroom? Um, I, I would look at the, um, the attitude of the instructor. Okay. Um, does the instructor really care about the people that are coming there? Is there... Um, you know, kindness shown in the room, or do they just push the student through yeah. a routine? Um, and they're all different instructors, and some people um, are better with an instructor that's a little bit more strict, and some are better with an instructor that's a little bit more flexible. I'd say shop around. Um, find find a group that fits your personality style, because that's you'll stick with it. So talking about certification, mm -hmm. is there more than one um, certifying body out yes. there is are there sure. certain ones that are better than others uh -huh. so that we can keep people away from any scams that yeah. might be out there um 
I don't I don't know that there are any scams. Okay. Go um, ahead. but I would certainly say that looking for an instructor that maybe is affiliated with a hospital or a workout facility, okay, um, or who has a studio rather than someone who you know is teaching it in their basement, right? Um, there's just a little level of security um, with that. Very good. Well. Um, Let's get into our demo. Okay. You've got a few exercises right. that you're going to show our audience okay. today. So let me move some things out of the way here All for right. you. And oh, you're going to do it with me. Oh, I am going to oh, do it you with are. you? <laughs> oh. oh, we didn't know no, we were no, going to be are. coordinated no, this is here. This is fine. <laughs> okay. just fine. Okay. So the first thing in Tai Chi that we want to do is we want to stand with our feet, shoulder distance apart and all four corners of our feet firmly planted on the ground. Okay. And we're just gonna breathe. And we're in Tai Chi, we breathe in through the nose and out through the nose. Okay. Um, and we're just gonna take a hmm, deep that's breath different. in. It we're is used to breathing in through our nose and out through exactly. our mouth. Exactly. Um, okay. But what breathing in through the nose and out through the nose does is it balances the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system. Mm -hmm. um, and from a Chinese medicine perspective, they say if you breathe out through the mouth, you haven't completed the circle of the breath. So okay. do the nose breathing. Right. And we're just gonna take a deep breath in, very gently, and then we're just gonna let it go. And do one more time. Okay. Now normally at the beginning of a Tai Chi class, we would do um, a little bit of deep breathing just to center ourselves. Then we would do some exercises called Qi Gongs. And Qi means energy and Gong means work. Um, and so we're just going to do a little energy work, a little breath work to kind of get that chi flowing through our bodies. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a breath in and we're just going to raise our arms, just let them float up. And then as if you were pushing water balloons down in water, let your hands come down as you exhale. Nice and slow. We're just going to inhale. Oh, you're a natural at this. <laughs> Exhale. And we'll just do that one more time. And at the beginning of the class, we would go through a series of about seven or eight different exercises where we would do that. And again, that can be done seated. Um, it can be done standing. It can also be done just laying in bed at night with your eyes closed visualizing okay. it and that can get you to sleep like that so oh, good to know we're going to learn a movement in the tai chi form which is the routine that you see people do called waving hands in clouds okay. and it's um the thing you see everybody doing on the arthritis commercials okay. or if you saw the movie right. calendar girls yeah that's what they were doing so okay. we're going to start with the hands first and we're going to put one hand down as if we were dusting this table and one hand in front of us as if we were washing a window and we're going to move this hand right to the elbow and then we're going to put the left hand down and the right hand's going to come up and we're just going to wash the window and dust the table oh. this hand goes down I know it's a good thing <laughs> we don't takes have, coordination it's a good thing we don't have gum to chew it's why I don't <laughs> let people chew gum in class so okay. now if we were in a class we would actually start moving side to side but since we're not, we're just gonna do it with a weight shift. So we're gonna press down on the right foot, change hands, and then we're gonna press down on the left foot and change hands. And we're just gonna do that. And you might at this point feel like a tingling in your palms of your hands. I do, actually. Do you, that's, the, <laughs> that's the chi. That's the chi being generated or the energy being generated. And how we're going to finish this off is we're just going to pretend that someone's offering us a ball. We're going to bring it into our heart, and we're going to do an open and close. Big breath in, and out, and down. And then we'll do one more movement. Um, I mentioned that the heart meridian runs from here to there. The lung meridian runs from the thumb up the arm, and the pericardium meridian runs up the middle of the arm. And what okay. we're going to do is a movement called parry. Um, and parry actually stimulates the chi or the energy in all three of those meridians. Um, parry in the martial arts is a throat strike. So if I were, you know, I'm, if I were doing that, I would be thinking about striking your throat. So all we're going to do is take the right hand, palm up, left hand, palm down. We're just very slowly going to push the right hand forward and move 
the left hand. Now when we get to here, we're going to flip. And we're going to do that on the other side. Flip. <laughs> I'm, I'm work trying. <laughs> I will tell you that it takes um, about six to twelve months before you can. My left hand doesn't quite know what my right hand well, is and that's, doing. And that's the truth too. And that's a great thing about Tai Chi because we learn to work both sides of our bodies and both sides of our brain. Okay. And then we'll just take that ball and we'll just finish off. Now, if we were doing that in a class, we would be um, walking forward as okay. we we're doing it. So oh, walking but, no, and walking in. <laughs> but it's but that's great because it really does um, Tai Chi is great for your brain, it's great for your body. It's challenging but it's easy to do. So So how long does it take the typical person to really get the hang of these? I would say six months to a year. Okay. Before you, you say, Oh, I've got that. It, before all those neural pathways start developing. Uh -huh. So I would say six months to a year. Okay. Yeah. But that's great uh, great benefit for our mind. I mean this yeah. is truly mind, body, it is soul. Yeah. It's everything it is. It in is one mind, package. body, spirit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well thank you very much, Good. Victoria. Thank we appreciate you. that you Shared your time with oh. us today, and and um, you might verbally tell her our contact information. So, do you want to? Sure. Yes, sure. Tell the audience okay. how to reach you. Um, if you'd like more information on a class, you can um, contact me at uh, on my cell, which is three one seven seven five three three eight seven one. We do have it down um, at the yeah, bottom of the screen. It's on the title bar. Um, you can reach me on my website and I would really encourage anybody who's interested in Tai Chi to go to the website. You I have can been read, on your website. Yeah, you can read, read articles. participant comments, you can read articles, um, you can contact me there. There's a current class schedule on there. Um, and then you can reach me by email, um, which is on the screen also. So got lots of ways to get in touch with me, and I'd be happy to answer any and all questions and have you come and observe a class. All right. F fantastic. Well, that wraps up our show for August, everyone. This time, this half hour went so fast today. It did, yeah. Um, so again, remember we have our Step Out Walk to Stop Diabetes on Saturday, August 27th. Um, please get on our website or contact our office at 317 three five two nine two two six and ask how you can join our walk to stop diabetes on august 27th thanks everybody we'll be back in september on our normal tuesday second tuesday of the month see you then